switch. They are exhausts. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. You guys see us, right? Yeah! Well, now you've done it. Well, hi there. Oh, this is so exciting. Everyone out there excited to see the show? Yeah! Oh, me too. I just love the live theater. We see lots of people coming here every day to see the show. Well, I'm Wither, and this is... I can introduce myself, thank you. I'm Snap. This is Snapper. Or you can do it. Oh, I'm so excited. It makes me want to say, la, 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 la. Oh, that's awful. Wither, what are you doing? Singing out of tuna. Thank you. Oh, that truly was awful. Oh, sorry. Won't do it again. It was a fluke. We just get to it. Oh, you're right, Snappy, you're right. After all, we're about to cheer for the halibut. Thank you! Oh, Ripper! Snapper! Let's please just get on with the introductions. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <clears throat> we are here to introduce the show. Welcome to John Tartaglia's Imagined Ocean. <laughs> Because in just a few moments, you're all going to go on a trip down to the ocean floor and meet all kinds of underwater friends. Oh, it's so beautiful and magical and there's coral and... But first, there are some very important rules. Yes, yes, that's right. We now present the rules of the show. <laughs> Rule number uno. That means one. I know, I know. Please stay seated at all times during the show. That's right. No running around the aisles, kiddos. Butts in the seats. You two parents. Rule number two. A very important one. Feel free to take pictures and video, but please, no flash pictures during the show. Ever. Ever. For any reason. For any reason. That's it. That's it. Would you stop that? Would you stop that? I mean it. I mean it. Uh. <laughs> What's so funny? I just can't believe you fell for that one hook. Why that singer? Thank you. I can't believe you just made a hook joke in a theater full of fishes. Oh, tasteless. Thank you. And finally, rule number three. When you like something you see, laugh and clap and make a lot of noise. I hate that rule. I love it. Let's show our friends waiting for us down in the ocean how excited we are to see the show. When I say go, everybody laugh and clap and make a lot of noise. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Don't 
worry about me. I can handle Tank. Oh, we'll see about that. Hey, who are they? Oh, must be some kind of new ocean species. They look like germ carriers. Well, I've never seen anyone like you before. Hello out here. Well, whoever you are, welcome. Ahoy, babies. <laughs> Do you want to play with Now the sea. 
You mean other fishes have been looking for this treasure? Oral lust. And you have the blue metal? Oral lust. Well, can we have it? Or no. Now? Not that. Not until you show your imaginations. A what? Your imaginations. I bet they're very wonderful and amazing things. Uh, it sounds dangerous. And goofy. Let's talk. I don't know. This imagination thing's a little weird. Well, then I guess you don't want a beautiful blue metal, huh? Alright, sit up. Bye. Wait! I, I, I love to use my imagination. You do? Sure. It's wonderful. Wow. We have the blue metal. You're that. You're all past the imagination test. We did? Thanks to Bubbles, she has an amazing imagination. I'm trying to endorse her. You're dirt too. We do? Uh, yeah, we do. What's next? According to the map, next we need to go to the old pirate shipwreck and we'll find the gold medal. Oh, I love this imagination thing. It's amazing. Just don't let it get your turn the world. Ooh, I want to imagine riding some big, beautiful currents all over the ocean. Yeah, 
and the Deutsche men have been so brave and kind-hearted, I wouldn't have given you the gold medal. True! What if the real treasure is all of the amazing things we did together and all the things we learned about each other? You know what, Dorsal? I think you're absolutely right. Huh, who needs a silly medal? Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way than an adventure with my two best friends. And you too, Leonard. Michael voices uh, Ripple, 
the seahorse and a baby jellyfish, Donna is Bubbles. So we kind of put all of our love for what we do into these characters and they're slightly based on our personalities, just slightly. I am definitely a bit of a worry ward. <laughs> so there's there's a little bit of us in there. Uh, but yeah, and actually, you know, the, the show started back in 2009, I think it was. So it's really funny to hear, you know, these voices again. It's, it's very, very emotional, actually, to hear them again. Anyone else up there? Anything? Can you ask anything? Yes? Uh, so there's three SeaWorld parks in the country. Um, how did the relationship with SeaWorld San Antonio form, and uh, who approached you? Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. I think if I understood your question, I think um, actually Roland from SeaWorld uh, has wanted to bring the show here for a long time. <laughs> He's a very patient man. And uh, we wanted to find a home for it. You know, it's, it's, we did it off-Broadway, we did it on tour, we did it overseas. Um, it actually got turned into a television series for a brief amount of time. So it's, it's really been part of our um, creative lives for a long time, and we always felt like we needed a permanent home. And this obviously couldn't be a more perfect place for it because of the themes of SeaWorld and what is here. So um, that's how it got here. And uh, we're hoping it'll live on many more places, too. Who knows? That's a great question. The question was, what's the one thing we want them to take away, with the audience and the kids to take away? And I always think it's the power, I think it's two things. I think it's that everybody contributes something differently. You know, I love, that's my favorite part of the show is when Dorsal kind of wraps up and has the, the uh, realization that each of them have a different strength, right? Bubbles is her heart and her imagination. Tense is his physical strength and his bravery. Dorsal's is his truth and his loyalty to making a new friend. And I think that's such an important thing for kids to hear that Everyone's got something different to contribute no matter who you are. Um, and I think it's also just the spirit and power of friendship, right? That they, the most important thing in the world is going through an adventure with the people you love, uh, no matter what it is. So I think those are the things I hope people take away. Yeah? Um, will there be merchandise? Will there be merchandise? I don't know. Will there be merchandise? I can't answer that. We all want bubbles and dorsal and tank and lettered plushes. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> They want the plushes, you heard it here. I have no power over those things, but I hope so. No power over I would, well, see. Friendship bracelets, that's what I'll get. <laughs> yes. That's a great question, yeah, I've been playing Spanish in there. We're certainly open to that, for sure. In fact, we actually did a production in Spanish. Uh, we got to go down to Guatemala and do it down there. So that would be something that would be wonderful to do. Yeah, to do that version here. We're totally, totally open to that. Yeah. Yes? Can you tell what you think is to the technical aspect of being a puppeteer, what all these actors, puppeteers, go through in preparation for this, what are some of the key things that uh, they have to keep in mind about the performing imagination? That's a great question. Yeah, uh, well, there's an old puppeteer adage, uh, which is, if you're, do if you're comfortable, you're not doing it right. And that's probably true for this show for these guys. They're in the most bizarre position possible. I mean, it's it's very, um, it starts with a very basic kind of puppetry called handed rod puppetry, which if you look at it, you'll figure that out, which is just their hands are inside making the mouths move, and then they're using rods and other ways to make the bodies move or body parts move. Um, but then from there, it's also just about using your entire body covered. Usually when we do television puppetry, which is what I tend to do, you know, our hands are over our heads, the camera kind of cuts off the puppet's waist, and anything we do below the scenes doesn't matter. It matters what you see on the screen. But here, everything that these guys do with their bodies affects what you see. They're literally sometimes almost laying down on the floor, right to get low, um, because with blacklight, it's magic until you see something cross. So what we're constantly trying to do is how do we hide the puppeteer and make you forget that they're there, right? So it's literally sometimes they're exactly, you're, you're seeing it now. They're in all sorts of, you know, when, you, when they do that figure eight, you know, they're literally running under each other, crossing each other, and, you know, because if, if C's body crosses in front of someone else, that ruins the illusion. So it's a lot of true collaboration of working together, communicating in the moment, putting hands on each other's shoulders in the dark, because they're also wearing hoods. So you're literally kind of in this void on stage. And it's a lot of trust, a lot of communication, and, and it's a lot of rehearsing to make sure that they're not going to run into each other. And that's also the brilliant direction of Don, like, who's back there, Don Drake, our wonderful director. You know, Don Drake, original company member of a chorus line on Broadway, thank you very much. 
you know, it takes so much dance skill to do this show because you have to be a really agile person who can get around and make sure you really memorize the counts and the time. So I would say that they're really combos of dancer puppeteers that are having to utilize every part of their body to make this happen. By the way, they're also doing a puppet with one hand and it might be like popping up a seaweed and grabbing a prop and pulling a current and a confetti can and like they're doing a million things at once. Any other questions? Yeah. That's a great, yeah, we're hoping that there's a way to get these characters outside the theater and get people to interact with them because the thing we hear the most with this show is how much people they want to meet them and love them and cuddle them. Uh, and obviously, you know, they look and work the best in black light. So I think that's something we're trying to figure out. And yeah. Let's see, plush, meet and greets. You guys have a list. <laughs> yes. I believe they'll do six to seven shows a day, is that right, Matt? Yeah, yeah six to seven shows a day. Thank you. 